Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to the Win911 How To Instructional Video Series. Today we will be discussing Factory Talk Alarm Events and how you filter the alarms into Win911. Getting started here, this is a list of all the SCAs that Win911 supports. If your SCA is not shown here, then you would need to use OPC for connecting to Win911. Today we'll be focusing mostly on Factory Talk Alarm Events and for the methods which you can bring your alarms in, it does not support alarm import, but you are allowed to use alarm subscriptions or filters. We'll use that term interchangeably. The method in which you can filter your alarms into Win911 is uh, by names, classes, and severity. At this point in the configuration, it's assumed that you already have configured your tactics and strategies. And you have, if you have not, then we recommend going back and watching those how-to instructional videos as part of our series. So we'll be focusing on the alarming tab for Factory Talk alarm events inside of Win911. If we click on the subscriptions tab there, you'll see a screen that looks like something like this. And this is where you can focus on those names, classes, and, and severities as highlighted in the black. These items are all anded together, and you can use any combination of these you should choose. The blue items inside there, they're or together. So in this example, we're looking for something that contains the, the name water level, but does not contain pump. And so on down the list with classes, we're looking for something with safety, with the asterisk wild card for anything after that, or the word valve. Finally, we're also looking for something that includes a severity range between 500 to 1,000. You can also filter on a specific severity value. For example, if you knew that the severity of the tag was 802, you could put just 802 by using specific severity value. Here's a list of alarms I'll be talking about throughout the walkthrough and configuration. I recommend taking a screenshot of this so you can have it in reference while I do the configuration. But the key takeaway of configuring your alarms is knowing who you want to notify and what, I, what things your tags or blocks have in common. So this first list of items in the red, these are items I want to send to the tech. These are all drive fault. So I'm going to, as you can see, it's one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to filter on the word drive for my uh, alarm subscription filter. The next set in the orange there, these are alarms I want to go to the operators. I'm going to filter on the class for PKG2. And then finally, we can filter on severity. These are alarms we want to go to the engineer. So we're going to filter on uh, severity between 800 to 830. Okay, here we are inside of Win91, the configurator, the browser-based configuration, and we're under alarming, factory talk, and subscriptions. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new subscription or a filter, and we're going to do that, those items that are in the red. Those are for the drive. So we're going to name this technicians because this is who we want to notify. You can choose to name it whatever you want. So let's just call it tech. Um, and then, as you can see, you have what you can filter on. We're going to choose specific names for this first one, and we're going to use the word drive. So anything that contains drive with the asterisks before and after, that's the wild card. So this is our first filter. N name it tech, and we're filtering on the word drive. We'll save that. We're going to make another one. This is going to be the one that we're going to send to operators. And we're going to filter on classes this time. And our class we want to filter on is going to be PKG2. And in these drop downs, you have the option to filter on wildcard, uh, contains, or does not contain. Regular expression is a little bit uh, too detailed to go to in, in, in this video. So we'll be filtering on PKG2. We'll just put a little asterisk up there. Um, and this is our, our next subscription filter. Finally, we're going to do the filter for uh, severity, where we're going to filter for our engineers. And in our example, according to that sheet, those are the purple items. We're going to be filtering on uh, severity 800 to 830. So type in here 800 to severity 830. One thing I didn't touch on yet, but using the advanced version of our software, the advanced license, you can also filter on labels and make it an advanced um, tactics and call-outs for labels. For example, you could filter on safety or, or refrigeration or whatever labels you create. Uh, so if I had a tactic, I could say, does this uh, have a safety label? 
does yes, this alarm has that criteria, we can do some filtering on that. And that's how you would add the safety label to, uh, or some other label to your uh, subscription filter. So let's just leave that on there for now. But to really take advantage of that, you would need the advanced license of our software. So let's save this. So now we have our all three of our filters are bringing those groups of alarms that we showed you in that colorful chart. Now we need to point them somewhere. So we're going to go over to the application tab. Now I already have a SCADA configuration connected here and set up, so I just named it demo. I won't go into that uh, too much right now, but this is where you would name your actual connection to Factory Talk. So we're going to do routes, and this is where we're going to make those pointers. We're going to add a new route, and the first route, those drive alarms, those uh, technician alarms that have the drives, those we call them tech, we're going to point them to a uh, strategy, and I have a strategy over here that is named tech. So your filter or alarms we just made is going to point to some strategy that's, your, that's going to point to your call list of people. You're just going to go online and do the same thing for the operators. And these are going to point to a strategy that I also have called operators. Finally, we're going to make our filter for our engineers that we just added. That's the severity filter. And we're going to point that to some strategy I have called engineers. And we'll save that. And then we have all of our, our filters are made one, two, three. So what's going to happen down the list is alarm comes in. It's going to be checking this filter. Does the alarm have this criteria, uh, which would be, does it have the word drive in it? No. Does it have this one? No. Does it have this severity? Uh, yes, it has a severity. So it's going to start to do this um, call out to the engineers. So you're allowed to push these up and filter however you, you want. Um, but they do see, go down sequentially down the list until you catch something. Now, one thing um, during your troubleshooting, especially during your configuration process to be aware of, one item you might want to add uh, to make sure your alarms do go somewhere and your filters are correct and you filter on the right things, you could do an all alarms filter. And just for troubleshooting purposes, you could do a do not notify. And why would you do this? Because what happens if you go down all these filters and your alarm isn't caught? I would recommend having it to go somewhere and a do not notify is a good place. Um, for that because you can do some troubleshooting to know that, okay, my alarm went through all these filters. It was supposed to go to the operator's uh, filter, but maybe it didn't. Maybe you need to check your case sensitivity on some of those uh, filters, or maybe you weren't for filtering on the cor uh, correct thing. And you can use this do not notify um, strategy in your Win 911 log viewer. So this is a tool that we have for troubleshooting. And in here, it shows the alarm that went off, what it was, the time, all that. And it also shows which strategy it went to. So say, for example, the, the strategy is going to uh, do not notify. You thought it was supposed to go to our operator strategy. That's an indicator that maybe you have uh, you typed something wrong in your configuration. So that's our troubleshooting tool with LogViewer. You can do, also click on it and see some of your alarms and details of who it went to and things like that. So this one went to Frank, is dispatched, is successful. This is helpful for uh, doing call outs determining who your alarms went to and if they went to the right person. Okay, so that's your uh, routes. We filter in your alarms. Um, we're pointing them to some call out list of people. I showed you the troubleshooting. Now I'm going to show you watchdogs. So watchdogs are handy if you want to do something like monitor a heartbeat of a PLC or something like that nature. You can give it a name over here and a little description. It's something that is after a timeout period, whatever it might be. And you can, again, point it to some strategy. You can point it to whichever one might be safety or do not notify or whatever it might be. So you can use that as a heartbeat, make sure something's still alive and your system's still up and, up and running. So that's a quick rundown of Factory Talk Alarm events, subscriptions, filters, and thank you for watching.